Hello everybody! This video will show you how to create a Microsoft Hyper-V virtual machine and how to recover data from a virtual disk of such machine after a failure or when the virtual machine can't start. To enable virtualization of its own operating systems, Microsoft developed a special tool – Hyper-V Manager. It is a convenient tool, but the one disadvantage is that it can create virtual machines only with Windows operating systems. Virtual machine support with Hyper-V is available in Windows 10 Pro and Enterprise. By default, it is disabled. And in order to use it, you have to enable this tool and turn it on. To do it, go to Control Panel – Programs and Features – Turn Windows Features on and off. In the opening Windows Features window, find Hyper-V and check all of its boxes and click OK. After that, restart the computer for the changes to take effect. Now to start Hyper-V, enter Hyper-V in Windows Search field and choose Hyper-V Manager. In order to create a virtual machine, in the opening window of Hyper-V Manager, click on the element with the name of the computer. After that, find the Actions column on the right pane and select New Virtual Machine. In the Virtual Machine Wizard window that appears, click Next. Specify the name of the virtual machine and its location. You can select any folder you like as a virtual machine location. If you don't do it, the machine will be saved to disk C by default. C – Program Data – Microsoft – Windows – Hyper-V. Next. Specify the virtual machine generation. Generation 1 or Generation 2. I select Generation 1 and click Next. In the next window, uh, let's give some memory to the virtual machine. As the widget suggests, its size should be at least 1 GB. To make sure the virtual machine is not going to be too hard for your PC to handle, I recommend setting its memory size at no more than 50% of the actual memory available. That is why I allocate 4 GB. The function Use Dynamic Memory for this virtual machine is activated by default. I recommend leaving the setting as it is. Next. In the Configure Networking window, the default option is not connected. If you leave it as it is, the virtual machine you are creating will not be connected to any networks. That is why before creating a, a Hyper-V virtual machine, you should go to Virtual Switch Manager and configure your network. Select External – Create Virtual Switch. Assign a name to the switch and click Apply and then OK. Now we can select this virtual switch in the Configure Networking window, so select it and Next. If you already have a virtual hard disk, you can connect it in this window. To do it, check the box using an existing uh, hard disk and specify the path to it. But we will create a new virtual disk, so let's check the corresponding box. Specify the drive name and the folder where it should be saved, as well as the size. The size can be anything you like, but it's better to have at least 30 GB and make sure that your hard disk still has enough space after you create the virtual machine. That is because your virtual machine may become larger in the course of work. Next. In the Installation Options menu, you can choose from where you are going to install the operating system for your virtual machine – from an installation disk or an ISO image file. The option you choose depends on what installation media you have. There is also an option I will install an operating system later. I select installation from an ISO image. I specify its location Next. In the window completing the new virtual machine wizard, you can see all the settings you have made. Finish. The virtual machine is created, which we can see from the appearing menu with its name. In order to start it, click Start and then Connect. 
the virtual machine starts and Windows is installed from ISO image that you have specified in the settings before. Installing Windows on a Microsoft Hyper-V virtual machine is similar to making a clean installation on a desktop or laptop computer. That is why I won't go into details. Watch another video on our channel to see clean installation of Windows. Find the link in the description. After the operating system is installed, you will have another that is virtual operating system that works inside the operating system of your computer. Unlike other virtual machine managers, by default Hyper-V never saves all virtual machine files, system files and virtual disk files into one folder. They are stored in various locations. Hyper-V virtual disk file is saved by default to the folder C Users Public Documents Hyper-V Virtual Hard Disks and has the extension VHDX. Other virtual machine files, including configuration files and snapshots, are saved to this folder. C Program Data Microsoft Windows Hyper-V. This folder also contains a VMCX file, the file containing virtual machine configuration settings. These folders are set by default, but as you remember, their location can be modified when creating a virtual machine. It should be noted that VHDX and VMCX are the main files in charge of virtual machine configuration and data, that is, of the machine's operability. If these files are recovered, you can also recover a virtual machine to a normal condition, including all files from its disk. To learn how to do it, read an article in our blog, follow the link in the description. In this video, I want to show you one trick, just in case if for some reason your virtual machine is no longer working and there are important files in its disks. I will show you how to recover them, though Hyper-V is a virtual machine, but real data can be saved there. As we have already said, all files stored in virtual machine disks are located in VHDX files of the virtual disk. Hetman Petition Recovery the program for hard disk data recovery has the function of mounting virtual disks and recovering data from such disks. You can download Hetman Partition Recovery following the link in the description. In order to get access to virtual machine files, run Hetman Partition Recovery and mount the virtual machine disk. If there are several of them, you can mount them all at once or one by one. To mount a virtual disk with the help of Hetman Partition Recovery, click on Mount Disk in the Quick Access menu of the program. As a result, the window of choosing a virtual disk will open. Go to the folder containing the virtual machine and choose the necessary VHDX file. Open. As you do that, the section Mounted Disks containing the list of mounted virtual disks will appear in the window, where all disks found by the application are shown. If you mount several disks, you will see the entire disk list there. Scan the disk with the application by clicking on the disk in the Disk Manager. After the analysis, the application will show the directory tree of the scanned disk. Find and recover the necessary files to a convenient location in your main operating system. By the way, you can use this method to move files from a virtual machine disk to the main operating system. That is all by now. If you like this video, click the like button below and subscribe to our channel to see more. We'll be glad to answer any questions in comments. Thank you for watching and good luck!